So today we're going to talk about the drugs that are used in pneumonia. So basically we're talking about antibiotics. So for example, a 25-year-old male presents to the emergency department with shortness of breath. And one week ago, he developed influenza and has become sh more short of breath and fatigued in the last 24 hours. And his temperature is 38.5 degrees Celsius and his oxygen saturation is 98% on 2 liters of oxygen. He has a blood pressure of 100 over 60 millimeters mercury and a heart rate of 120 per minute. So this is how a patient with pneumonia comes one of the ways that they can present with. So, so besides um, viruses causing pneumonia and other organisms, so the main thing that we want to focus on today is bacterial causes of pneumonia. And in most studies, um, it has been found that um, strep pneumonia is the most commonly identified pathogen followed by uh, Haemophilus influenzae. So when we talk about antibiotics, um, it's good to have an overview of the antibiotics used to treat pneumonia. So we have um, the cell wall synthesis inhibitors, so they block the bacterial cell wall synthesis, mainly the penicillins, cephalosporins, and also the vancomycin. And then we have the protein synthesis inhibitors of, so these drugs, this group of drugs inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria. So they include macrolides like erythromycin, aminoglycosides like gentamicin, and then tetracyclines too. And then we have the drugs that affect cell membrane permeability. And then we have the nucleic acid synthesis or DNA formation inhibitors. So these include the sulfonamides, trimethoprime and also quinolones. So basically we have the natural penicillins such as penicillin G and penicillin V and then we have the anti staphylococcal penicillin such as coxacillin and then we have amino penicillin, such as ampicillin, amoxicillin, and amoxicillin clavulinate. And then we have anti pseudomonal penicillin, such as tisarcillin and piperacillin. So these are the main groups of penicillins. And then we have second generation cephalosporins, such as cefuroxime. And then third generation cephalosporins, including ceftriaxone and ceftazidine. And then we have the fourth generation cephalosporins, such as cefepine. Then we have the group of drugs known as quinolones. So example is especially superfloxacin. And then we have aminoglycosides, gentamicin macrolides such as erythromycin and clarithromycin and the cabapenems such as meropenem and then we have the metronidazole. So this, this is just an overview of the commonly used antibiotics. So these, these antibiotics are supposed to cover the gram-positive. Some of it will cover the gram-positive and gram-negative and some will cover only the gram-negative and some will cover anaerobes. So, so this is just an overview of the groups of drugs. So to be more specific, this is um, how a table might be constructed to show the sensitivity of some pathogens, some bacteria to certain um, group of antibiotics. For example, we know that strep pyogenes is sensitive to penicillin G penicillin V and also strep pneumonia are sensitive to these two, staph aureus and 
plant bacillus enteresis, Bacillus meningitis, and then Haemophilus influenzae. Mm, I need the spelling here, it's basically influenzae, and then E. coli, Plepsilla. So this is, this is just to give a, um, this is a, not a complete diagram, but I, so these things will differ. You can, so you can have a positive here and then positive here somewhere. And then, so different um, places will have different um, susceptibilities of the pathogens to, of the bacteria to different groups of all or different antibiotics. So we have also other um, other groups of um, pathogens or bacteria that do not gram stain or gram stain poorly. For example, chlamydia pneumonia and then Chlamydia trachomatis. So, in the case of chlamydia pneumonia, you have to use tetracycline. And then we have also have others like rheumatoid tuberculosis, Legionella, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Coxiella benetti. So, so these are some of the antibiotics that can be used to treat some of these conditions. So, we have tetracycline, methampicin, vancomycin, and also cotromaxazole. So considerations in choosing an antibiotic. So we have to always look at the clinical picture. Also look at the lab and look at the lab laboratory and also the radiographic findings, the X-ray findings. And also based on the age of the patient, the local epidemiology of respiratory pathogens the sensitivity of the pathogens to antimicrobial agents and also the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. Besides that, we also have to look at the severity of the pneumonia and also the cost of the antibiotic. So we have to know we want to know whether it's cost effective or not to to treat certain um, infections with um, certain antibiotics. So viruses encompass about 15% of pneumonia cases. So besides um, giving antibiotics, um, supportive therapy include fluid therapy, oxygen therapy, and also we can, can, can give antitussives for the cough. So these are some of the commonly used antibiotics and their dosages. Um, this is um, actually for pediatrics um, and this is the table taken from the Malaysian um, CPG clinical practice guideline so this is a bit outdated actually but this just just gives um, students uh, some overview of what are the commonly used um, antibiotics so we have amoxicillin clavulinate acid and then pisillin sulbactam pisillin and then cefiroxime cefiroxime Oxacillin, and then we have azithromycin, augmentin, cefiroxime, and then again cloxacillin, erythromycin, and then penicillin V. So these are some of the dosages that we can use, for example, for a five year old kid. So you can use five, sorry, for a five kilogram um, baby, you can use, for example, 50 milligrams um, every eight hours. So three times a day. So that's a dose for a fifth kilogram um, baby. So this is an example of a question. Um, 25 year old male presents to the emergency department with shortness of breath. And one week ago he developed influenza and has become more short of breath and fatigue in the last 24 hours. His temperature is 38.5. Oxygen saturation is 90% on 2 litres of oxygen. A blood pressure of 100 over 60 and a heart rate of 120 per minute. And the chest x-ray shows patchy consolidation. So which antibiotic therapy should you select for this man? So you have the options A, amoxicillin, then amoxicillin and flocloxacillin, and then 
amoxicillin and gentamicin, amoxicillin and rifampicin, and also fluofloxacin. So, patients who present with pneumonia after influenza or measles are at risk of staph pneumonia. So, you always look for cavitation on the chest x ray. And according to the British Thoracic Society guideline, um, moxicillin should be the first line therapy for all pneumonia with the addition of fluoxacillin if there is a risk of it being staphylococcal. So, we go back to the, so the answer is B in this question. So it's moxicillin plus fluoxacillin. Fluoxacillin. So gentamicin may be indicated in severe hospital acquired pneumonia and rifampicin in severe atypical infections, for example, the genella. So another case is a 25-year-old man who presented to the, to the ED with cough, sharpness of breath, and headache. So he had been he had been treated by his GP with moxicillin but did not improve and he had recently been on holiday in Spain. So in examination he had bilateral crackles and his liver enzymes were deranged. So what could this be? Okay, so in this case it's almost probably Legionella and Legionella pneumophila will, will respond to microlytes such as erythromycin, erythromycin alone such as ciprofloxacin and also tetracyclines and one should be careful to cover atypical pneumonia when choosing antibiotics and mortality can be high especially in the immunocompromised and one should not wait for the results of culture or urinary antigens um, okay so the next question is So a 73-year-old woman is referred to the emergency. Um, so I think maybe we can skip this, this one. So, so that's all I think for today. Um, so we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.